if, if you're going to use a small group ministry, we use a small group ministry pretty extensively in helping people grow, particularly uh, in the first one or two or three stages of, of their growth. Um, but really for community throughout, we, we, um, we use small groups. But the types of small groups, we didn't used to do this. We just said there's small groups, pick the one you want. And it was more about the topic or who was leading it and that kind of thing. Now what we do is we've at least tried to separate out different kinds of groups. And we have two main types of groups and then two other kinds of groups. Um, one of our main groups is a community group. And so what we say there is if you're new to LaCroix, if you've been coming for a year or two years, or if you have never gone to small groups before, a community group might be really good for you because it's a place where you get a relational foundation. There are people in the church who know you. Um, if, if you or one of your kids gets sick and go in the hospital, they're going to provide frontline pastoral care. They're going to be the first people to get to the hospital and let the pastors know and let the rest of the people who can be praying for you know what's going on. They're going to take care of you. They're going to clean your house or bring you a meal or whatever it is to support you and love on you. So those community groups are huge. And then we have immersion groups, we call them, and they're just simply groups that are a little less. It's not like they don't have any relational component. They do, but it's less about that relational component and more about just immersing themselves in God's Word, studying God's Word and how it's going to impact. And it's that iron sharpens iron kind of thing. Um, and the study becomes more important because a lot of those people are already very relationally connected in the church. Then we have two other kinds of group on kind of on either end. One we call a connectional group. So after we start small groups, uh, maybe there's a membership class that comes up and rather than saying, well, wait till the next semester when groups start again, we start a group kind of off the normal start time and we invite people that just need to get connected initially uh, to experience small group for six or eight weeks and then decide this is something I want to do and I can look for another group. Or, or actually what happened last fall is our connectional group said, gosh, we really love each other and this is great. We're just going to stay a group. And we found somebody in there that was a good leader, and uh, they've taken off as a group. The other kind of groups, then, that we have are covenant groups. Uh, that's an old Wesley thing, you know, uh, accountability groups, you might call it. And those are groups that are just maybe two, three, four people who are really sharing the very depths of life and really mentoring one another and challenging one another to move on. And and those groups are big, too. The, the thing that you have to be careful about there is that uh, some of your most Christ-like people and your best leaders can easily begin to hole up in a covenant group and have less and less impact throughout the rest of the church. So we ask those people that are in covenant groups to please stay a part of or lead another kind of a group uh, so that they're still having the impact that they've had in the past. We use, a, we use a variety of curriculum in our small groups and our small groups vary. We've got women's groups and men's groups and couples groups and mixed groups and it, it really some of that falls down on the leader and what they want to do and what they feel called to do and we, we we are refining our curriculum we basically had no curriculum we'd check everything that people were doing and make sure it was you know theologically sound but they could do whatever they want now we're starting to trim that back a little bit because we want to make sure that we're not just doing things that are okay to do but we're doing things that are actually going to help people move to the next step we want to be intentional about that and uh, so, so we're, we've got all these different kinds of group and we're narrowing down the curriculum, but we are, we fell into the idea of having these different types of groups as we begin to learn that that process changes over time. And we need to make sure that we have things available for people that are going to be catalytic for where they are. And so it kind of fell out of that is we recognized um, early on in people's walk, a community group helps them grow. Um, after about three or four years, what you hear is, I remember our group used to be great, and we still like everybody, but it's just different. And You know, what's different is, is they're different. They've grown to a point where that group is no longer doing what it used to do. They still love everybody in there. They enjoy getting together once a week, but it's more like lunch than it is a, a discipleship activity. Um, and so they need to move on to something that's going to challenge them again. And uh, so we kind of came up with this idea that, really defining for people, these are community groups, these are immersion groups, both are important, but each one is going to impact you differently over time. And uh, whether you're a church that has small groups or you have Sunday school or whatever you have, I think the idea that there are different phases and there are different people in different phases and what they need is different and to at least have environments that you create where people can grow no matter where they are uh, becomes really important.